Hi there, I'm Jess Arce, America's dyslexia expert and CEO of 3D Learning Experts. And today's myth number nine that I'm going to be busting is dyslexic people are dumb. We are not dumb. However, very much like the lazy part, because people just make these assumptions about us, we start to believe these to be true. So I actually named my corporation I Am Not Dumb Inc. because that seemed like the most appropriate name for my corporation. And my book is titled I Am Not Dumb, I Am Dyslexic. Because again, so many people think that they are dumb or stupid and they are not. It's just that we need to be taught differently using an Orton-Gillingham approach. So I want to um, share with you a couple of examples of the difference of why we're not dumb. So many people think that the ability to read or spell should be something that comes naturally to people with dyslexia or people, all people. And that's not true. Every human being, unless they are deaf or mute, should be able to learn to communicate verbally due to their being around people. However, reading and spelling are skills like tennis, basketball, golf, horseback riding, being a doctor, being a lawyer, being a teacher. Those are all learned skills. Some people are more natural at picking up skills than others. Like, um, my, an example I like to give is about basketball. So, one of my sons wanted to play basketball and he was not very good at it. And he was on a team with a friend who was naturally pretty good at playing basketball. So we hired a coach to help my son learn to become a better basketball player. And it helped some. He did become better, but he never became great. Versus the friend got on the basketball court and was a natural at it. He could bounce the ball and throw it into the hoop, no problems. Not my son. My son could hardly ever get the ball into the hoop. However, through the private coaching classes he had, he did learn to dribble the ball and run with it, which was something he couldn't do beforehand either. And he learned the basic skills to get the basketball into the hoop. My point is, some people are born better at things than others. And for dyslexic people, it's very common especially people with profound or severe dyslexia, that they're going to need extra help to learn how to do things that the average person can do, like read or spell. We provide our students with tools that help make it easier for them to remember. Very often our students will say, no one ever taught me these um, rules. Or parents will say, I never learned these rules in school. Well, because your average learner doesn't need these tools and tricks to be able to remember how to read and spell words. But the dyslexic brain is different, and so having these tools and tricks make it really helpful. Some learners will have private tutoring with us and they will improve, but they may not become amazing readers or spellers. However, some students will take those tools and run with it. I had a student a couple years back who started with us in second grade and he was reading on a kindergarten reading level, which is about average for our students that we have. Within two years, when he was in fourth grade, he was reading on a seventh grade reading level. Now, that's not our average. On average, when students start working with us in second grade and are reading on a kindergarten level, within two years, they're reading on grade level. 
they're still making amazing improvements, right? That's four or five school grade, um, four, that's four or five grade levels. However, this young man was reading on a seventh grade reading level by fourth grade. That is right, seventh grade. He moved up eight reading levels from a kindergarten reading level to a seventh grade reading level. And at that point, I told his mom that he no longer needed our help. She, at first, was shocked and planned on having him tutor with us till the end. But it didn't make sense for him to continue because he had grasped the understanding of reading and spelling so well that he was well beyond his cognitive abilities in fourth grade. So keep that in mind when you have expectations of your child or yourself for that matter, because reading and spelling are not a natural skill that everyone should have. I mean, think about it. Regular everyday people were not reading a couple of years ago. I mean, a couple of hundred years ago. It was just the emperors and the um, kings and the religious leaders who were the ones who read. The average everyday people were not expected to know how to read. So our world has changed a great deal over the last, what, three or 400 years. So like I said, I wrote a book called I Am Not Dumb, I Am Dyslexic. And that book is an easy to read explanation of dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia so that you can read it too. I tried years ago to read Sally Shaywood's book. It's an amazing book, so I've been told uh, that many dyslexics will recommend or many people in the dyslexic field will recommend reading. However, many people in the dyslexic field are not dyslexic, so they can read it no problem. I personally struggled with that book, and I'm sure many other parents who have dyslexia and want to learn more about their children struggle with it too. So my book is only, how many pages long is it? Uh, 100 and... 71 pages, 170, because the last page is, a ref is references. It's in a larger font and written in plain English. I will read to you what the table of contents is so you can know what to expect. And our book is available for just $1 on a digital download on Amazon, or for just a few dollars more, you can get a digital signed copy of the book. And if you'd like a paperback version, which I don't know if you're anything like me, but I prefer to have my books in print and be able to highlight because I'm a kinesthetic learner. So that's available on Amazon for $12.95. So part one, interesting facts. Then about the author. That's me. Chapter one, this is us. That chapter is about my family. Chapter two, the signs. Oh, part two, I'm sorry. Part two, the signs. And that is also chapter two. Chapter three, the three Ds. Dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia. Chapter four, Signs of Dyslexia, Chapter 5, Signs of Dysgraphia, Chapter 6, Signs of Dyscalculia, Part 3, The Gift of Dyslexia, Gifts, there's more than one gift, Chapter 8, Career Endeavors, Chapter 9, So What Do We Do Now, Chapter 10, Orton Gillingham and Multisensory Techniques, I give lots of suggestions of how you can help your learner at home using different multi-sensory techniques. Chapter 11, strategies for success. Chapter 12, suggestions for the workplace. Chapter 13, the conclusion. Easy peasy. I highly recommend that you pick up my book either on digital download or a hard copy of a paperback version.
or both. We also have an audiobook available. And if you're an auditory learner, that's an excellent way to listen to the book. And you can get the digital or the paperback copy and have it as a reference for later. Again, we'll drop the link for how you can purchase the book, either digitally, the audio version, or the heart, the paperback, which are all available on Amazon. And if any of this resonates with you, I highly recommend that you check out some of our other videos or schedule a consultation call with me and we can discuss your individual needs and concerns about yourself or your child on a one-on-one -on -one call.